All right, everybody, welcome to another League of Legends plus Ask Me Anything Business Advice with my co-host, Rishi Cup TV. Welcome aboard, Rishi. Thanks so much, Evan. Hi, Believe Nation. Hi, everyone. We're, we're in back-to-back -back days. This is serious. I'm loving it. It's I getting, hope you're loving it because I'm loving it. It's getting serious. It's getting serious. <laughs> Yesterday was all about raising capital and uh, mm -hmm. it turned up a little bit. Actually, I, I had to go nap after that session yesterday. <laughs> Seriously, because I had a whole day of uh, hangouts and interviews and calls. And uh, I like, know. oh man, I need, I need to break. I need a break after my four hour sleep. So it was good. It was good. It was a fun awesome. day yesterday. It was fun. And I caught uh, some of those hangouts. They were on fire. Nice. All right. Well, I'm making sure this is online. It says I'm streaming, but it's showing offline on Twitch. I'm going to load up a game. I, think I do see you, so you are live on my end. Nice. All right, let's load up a game. Let's see if we can get our Teemo jungle on. And uh, what's this one? Oh, oh, this is new. It's queue is fast if you go support. Well, that's no surprise. All right, let's hit up our first question. What do we got? Let's do it. Our first question comes from Victoria, and she is trying to break into the curve modeling industry. And she also would really like to start her own business, in particular her own lipstick line or her own lip lipstick range. And she was wondering if you have any advice or information on how she could do this. She wants to start a pro so, lipstick line. Her own, yep, she wants to get into the curve modeling industry. And then from she also wants to start her own lipstick. What what was the first one? What model industry? Curve modeling? Curve modeling, okay. Yeah, so curve modeling, from what I understand is I mean, I don't know if they call it more plus size model, but Right, 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 um, right. Okay, that's cool. All right, so uh, the first thing that came to mind for you, Victoria, is start a YouTube channel. Because mm. um, it, it would just be so fun, especially since you're in the beginning of your journey, uh, and there's going to be so many people out there who probably have a similar desire and would be really inspired to see your journey and your process. So even from starting a video that says, hey, I don't know what I'm doing, but this is what my dream and my goals are. And, and um, that obviously then is a great way to start um, a, a brand. And even if you don't know that right off the bat, you're starting to get people familiar with you and with modeling and with makeup. And one of my favorite makeup YouTubers actually uh, from just their own YouTube channel and working really hard and and making amazing videos. You know, they started their own, uh, I think they have their own brush. He, he has his own line of brushes now, cosmetic brushes, and I don't know if he has lipstick, but um, I just think that's a great place to start. Um, and then I'd also, in the meantime, I would look for someone to, to work with or mentor me in, the, in that. Uh, maybe, you know, you know another person who's started their own brush or their own lipstick or their own eyeshadow, you know, get with someone who's done it before. What do you think, Evan? Um, I like it. I, I'm thinking, I, I'm wondering just how distracted it's going to be to try to create two products at the same time. Um, I got to ban a champion. Who am I going to ban? I'm going to ban Yasuo. <laughs> um, so you think between going trying to break into the curving modeling industry and also starting our own lipstick range might be too much at once? My my worry is that it's just gonna take up yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be too much to do all at once and you'll just end up being mediocre at both instead of dominating one thing. Um, I would try to figure out which one I'm most passionate about and go all in on that. Once you have a name, whether it's uh, being a model, having a YouTube channel, like Reese suggested, it's way easier to create product around it. 
people will buy your lipstick because of who you are and because of the fan base that you've built up. And so from a, from a practical point of view, that one makes the most sense of starting with the, the modeling, the curve modeling, getting the channel up, getting your name out there, becoming a brand that people recognize, a name that when people see they know who it is, uh, having a fan base and then creating product that you love um, around lipstick or whatever the next thing is. But, you know, the practical thing is not always the best thing to do. <laughs> like if the lipstick is what is what you love and that's that's your biggest passion, then you could do that and you could be in the lipstick commercials and you can model for, you know, your lipstick ads and if you're doing website, you know, your face is on there. Um, but I, I think I think for now I would pick one and have the other one take a back seat. Uh, it doesn't mean you're not thinking about it, you're not looking for opportunities, but um, take a back seat so you can focus on having the success that you're after. If you're going for the modeling, I agree. I think getting your name out there, having a YouTube channel, uh, doing a bunch of free work, you know, like getting on Craigslist and seeing what, what people are needing models for, for videos, for photo shoots, student projects, just building up your portfolio and one opportunity leads to another, leads to another. I mean, I found my uh, video guy who comes in and, and shoots me every Wednesday for my channel on Craigslist. Um, and now we've, oh, worked, wow. now we've worked, I don't know, for over a year together. Um, I auditioned a couple people and he was the one I liked the best and, and we've been working together for a while. So you need to build up your portfolio. You need to be able to see the stuff that, that you've done and work on as many projects as possible and start meeting people in the industry. And so that's an mm -hmm. easy way just mm -hmm. to get started and, and, you know, expect not to get paid at the start. Um, kind of the process just to build your name. If you're doing the lipstick launch, I'd be looking at like, what's different about your lipstick? What's, is it the ingredients, mm -hmm. is it the process, is it the branding, is it the messaging, right? If it's the ingredients, then like you might have to create your own lipstick at home and figure it out uh, and then go and get it manufactured. If it's just the messaging and the branding, you might be able to license or buy existing lipstick lines um, and just package it and label it with your own messaging. So depending on what the intent of starting that lipstick line is, there's a couple different options to go with. Um, mm -hmm. But I would definitely try to think about what your message is if you're going with the, the lipstick line, uh, how the marketing is going to be different than the ones that are already out there, how you want women to feel when they're putting on your lipstick instead of other people's lipstick. Because uh, there's so many lipsticks out there that you need to be able to differentiate yourself. Yeah, absolutely. A lipstick with a message. All right, so next question comes from Ask, and I hope I'm saying that name right, Ask. I'm sorry if I'm not. So Ask, this is a, a little bit more of an in-depth question, Evan, uh, sent you a 14-page document called Epic Step-by-Step -Step Guide to Lower Price by Lead. And so he basically is making a guide for his customers and wanted to get your feedback in regards to this document. Um, and he's got some bullet points of questions. Do you want me to ask you those specific questions? Uh, sure. Let's, let's hear it. Okay. The first question is, um, in pertains to making this better, does he add more data-driven arguments or reasoning? Uh, does he, I know that for our listeners, this is a little bit out of context, but because you guys can't see the document, but uh, the I next question either. is, does, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is probably a good time too uh, to say that those of you guys who are asking, you know, questions to Evan, who is, I know, gosh, I mean, jam packed all the all day every day um, changing the world um, if you want to get your questions answered and you know that someone has got a lot of things going on maybe 
sending an email with a very large document to get feedback isn't the best approach. How many questions did, w were there? Well, there were five questions. Okay. Four questions. And I guess since you don't have the document, I don't know if there, but we, I guess we, you, you let me know how you want to answer this question. And then the third question is, he has an analogy in the document that he wanted feedback on. And then he had a question about the headline. Okay. What do you think? So I guess what I would, what I would just, my feedback probably for ask is, this is a great lesson I think for how to be, how to really leverage or get the most out of getting feedback from people who are, um, who are, who you're aspiring to, you know, be or get feedback from and realizing that most of the time people may have literally only 10 seconds to glance at an email. And so the likelihood, actually we were talking about this yesterday or Tuesday, Evan, when one of the people, uh, one of the questions was about trying to get Oprah's attention. And so realizing that people who are super, super, super world changer busy people, if you send them something and you want feedback on it, the likelihood is that maybe you'll get a little bit of time for them to check out your email or your call. So I would just give feedback more specifically to ask about when you uh, want feedback from someone who's super busy, super on purpose, try to figure out a way to make it really quick and easy for that person um, to give you the feedback that you need because now, I'm not speaking for you, Evan, but I, if I got a 14-page document and I was super, super busy, I don't know that I'd be able to even open it up. So that's my kind of tough love. Rishi's, Rishi's dishing it out. Rishi's <laughs> dishing it out today. Uh, so update on the game here. I'm playing Heimer mid, so it's not my usual character, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and I just want to... I just yep. want to say too that I've done that. I've done that before. Like I've made the assumption that someone has all the time in the world to like hear my problem. Right. And the reality is, is everybody's trying to do stuff. So um, it's not that people don't care, but it's just we've got to realize that um, we have to be a little bit, bit realistic, especially with people who are really super uh, on purpose. Like I know you are. Yeah, and, and I agree, it's kind of some tough love, um, and I want to give you an example maybe in, in looking at um, when I was getting Gary Vaynerchuk to endorse my book and how that kind of came about. Uh, I first met Gary, this might be a bit of a long story, but hopefully it, it's, it's helpful. Uh, I first met Gary when I was making a line of entrepreneur trading cards back in 2010, and I asked him to recommend who his favorite famous entrepreneur was so I could add that to his own card. And I didn't connect with him for another couple of years. I was really at the time I wasn't like a huge fan just looking at just looking at uh, famous entrepreneurs and wanted to make this line of cards and he was one of 30 people that were part of a, the blog series. I wanted to then as I learned more about him like maybe four years later get more involved, you know, help him out, ask him some questions, um, get on his show as that came about. And every time I emailed him, it, it never, it didn't lead anywhere. I didn't get a, res I didn't get a response. Uh, and the key thing there that really helped me was I did things differently. So the next thing I did with Gary was I made a, a thank you Gary v video where I connected with 50 of his fans who made a video saying thank you for all the work that he had done. Now to get 50 people to make a video, it means I had to contact hundreds of people, right? Like 50 wow. people actually responded with a video. So that's a lot of work, right? You know, it's, it's a lot of back and forth. It was an insane amount of effort. Uh, but it got his attention. It got noticed. Mm. He cared, right? Because nobody else put in that kind of work 
to reach him. Wow. Uh, and then I wrote to him to say some questions for his show, to try to get on, that kind of stuff. And I still didn't, uh, I didn't get a response on that, but he did email me a thank you for, for the, uh, making the thank you video. Uh, so I had his email, so that was a good start. <laughs> um, <laughs> What happened next was I made the top 10 rules of, for success of him. He was trying to promote his book at the time. It was a good exposure for him. And that worked out really well. And again, he wrote back and said thank you and it helped give him some exposure for the book. And then I wanted to have him on my show. And we did an interview. We ended up doing an interview a while ago, maybe a month ago. I wanted to have him on my channel to talk about what he was up to, promote the book, do an interview. I didn't respond, and then I saw an email, a uh, video, one of his videos talking about how he likes super short emails and he likes doing business just in the subject line. So I wrote him a, an email hey. just in the subject line saying, hey, love to have you on the show, got 300,000 subs, let's do it, let's promote your book. And he wrote back and he said yes. <laughs> and so... Think about the amount of work that went into that. If, like, if there's somebody who you want to get on their radar, they're not going to read a 14-page document and then answer five questions for you, right? Unless, unless you've done something insanely crazy to help them, unless they know you from somewhere, it's not something mm -hmm. that most people are going to do, right? And Gary, you know, I gave a lot of love to Gary, and it took a long time to get any kind of impact and reach there but I also wasn't offended I also didn't feel like you know this guy owes it to me you know I did this for him he better respond we better you know he better do this I recognize that he's a busy guy he's got a lot going on and I just put it on me to I need to stand out more I need to do better so one if you if you are reaching out to people you know, you know I make an effort I think more than most to try to respond to questions and be engaged uh, most people don't respond to their comments, <laughs> respond to questions at all. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. might have an easier time getting a hold of me, but still I'm not going to read a 14 page document and then answer five questions. Right. And, and hopefully that doesn't, you know, upset you, but it's, uh, it's important. It's it important. Is, yeah. I'm in the middle of a fight. I got to kill. And I died. You actually look, you actually, oh wow, I was just about to say you look like you're doing exceptionally well today. <laughs> yeah, I died. I died. It was okay. It was doing, I was doing well and then I, anyway, I, I got one kill and I died too. So it's, it's okay. Um, so, so lessons learned from that, from that story. One is, That's a great story. Like, add more value, right? If you want to get on somebody's radar, mm -hmm. Add more value, right? I should look at their email and say, oh, it's an email from this guy. I have to open it, right? Like if Rishi sent me an email asking me to look at a 14 page document, I would because Rishi's added a lot of value, right? So if you're trying to reach out to somebody, add more value, make your name recognizable. If, if they see your name, it should be something that is they know who you are. Right? And, and maybe, maybe you feel like I should know who you are. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't. So you got to add more value. Um, second, make sure that you are keeping your ask easy. Right? Like, if you just asked me one question, I probably would have, ah, I got a kill. Nice. If you asked me one question, I probably would have just answered it. Uh, without reading the 14 page document, I probably would have just answered mm -hmm. it to try to help. But because you made it so hard to answer, you, you're asking for too much time, then I can't. So one, add more value, two, keep your ask easy, and that'll improve the chances. Now let's try to help them out with one of the, with one of the questions. Yeah. It's, a, it's a 14 page document that is what's the what's the purpose of it so like, it's a it's called the epic step by the epic step-by-step -step guide to lower price by lead so um, 
you know, with I guess without having the document in front of you, are there some maybe essential elements that you feel are really important to include in a guide for your customers? I mean, we could kind of make it uh, general for, because, you know, people are always wanting to improve their, their, uh, their guides or whatever it is that they're providing yeah. for their so customers. It's, like a, it's so, like a free bonus PDF download kind of thing for yeah. customers. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so whether you use it for like I mean, a newsletter list or you're, you know, just having it as something on your website, uh, general things I would suggest. One, most importantly, make it something that you're proud of. Make it something that if you, uh oh, I'm gonna die. I died. Very sad. Make it something that you're proud of. Like, what are the things that that are really important? Like, it's not just a sales document, but there's a lot of value in there. What are the, some of the common things that? customers are asking you that you see as problems that is really different about your business. Don't just throw together a bunch of things that aren't really going to add a ton of value. Make it again something that you you are massively proud of. Like this is going to be this is going to help a lot of people. Then you, you may be wrong, like it may not help, it may not be super valuable, but at least you think it is. Um, so that would be of all the things like whether you add more data, whether you add more you know, testimonials or stories or facts and figures or whatever it is, it doesn't really right. matter. There's different kinds of styles that people like. Some people love the graphs and the stories. Some people love the pictures. Uh, honestly, your style, if you, if you write and create in your style, you'll attract customers that appreciate that style and feel the same way. Just make sure that it's something that you love and you're proud of. Most important thing with, with the document that you're creating. Not just for marketing purposes, but there's a ton of value in it. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely something that will will really catch people's attention. I mean, there's so much, so much already out there that you really have to. I think too, it comes back to a little bit of that one word and being able to put that in anything, right? Like having, because yeah, I see anything that you put out of it, it's always still got to focus its purpose in some way. Yeah. I don't know if that if that helps, but. Um, ask if you're at all familiar with uh, the book that is in pre-launch right now, Evan's book, uh, One Word, just talks about being really, uh, well, I'm not going to say what it talks about, because <laughs> you should buy it, but um, <laughs> I, think the, I think the most important thing is just like really have a clear focus on what, your, what you feel um, is your your purpose and vision in the midst of, of your business because I think that you can infuse that into anything whether it's a guide or a um, you know any freebie that you're offering your customers it, it just kind of brings it all together and gives it a focus so thanks for the question ask next it. question are you ready for it Evan? Yep. hit me up Next question, it comes from Damien, and Damien says, as you know, Evan, I'm a big fan of your work. I was wondering if I could request some entrepreneurs for the top 10 rules for success. And, well, I think that's a pretty common question, and people are always making uh, requests. So, um, Evan, have you changed how people make requests, or people still just make requests in the comments of their videos? Yeah, the the best way is is uh, in the video. Uh, my team picks it up. So what happens with you know I want I want every comment that that we put out sorry every comment that gets put up on the video to be uh, to get a response. I feel people are spending their time leaving the comments. We owe owe it to them to give a response. Um, and so I do a lot of them, but also I want I want to you know make sure that the ones that I'm doing are of high value. And you know if I had to spend my time on some comments, that it's it's basically paying off, right? So the request ones are not you know the most fantastic use of my time, uh, but my team does pick it up. So the easiest way to to get a request is just leave a comment on the video, my team picks it up, and uh, we're trying to pick the ones that are more requested, that are more popular, 
uh, that lots of people have asked for. Uh, we're trying to do a better job of that. Before, we would just go in order of the most, mm. the oldest one. But people keep okay. asking for the same ones over and over again. So we thought, okay, we owe it to them to give them. Uh, so it's like 100 people are asking for the same one. We want to try to offer that for them. Um, yeah, that's but good. yeah, easiest way is just leave a comment on the video. Tell me what you want. My team will pick it up. The questions come to me. And uh, that's it. That's how we pick. And you might be surprised when you ask for a request and there's already a video made. So I've seen that happen where people ask for, uh, or they request a person and the video has actually already been made. So oh, tons, tons. Maybe. Like it, it's also, it's a, it all, almost comes back to the last question about the 14 page document, like respecting the time, you know, we're making mm. these videos, it's free for you. Just do a search to see if it's already there or not, right? Chances are we may have already made it. A lot of them, mm -hmm. a lot of them we have already done. And it just boggles my mind that people aren't uh, searching first to see. Like one for your own time. Like you really want that, just type in that person's name. We're probably going to show up for top 10. Right, I know. It's pretty much... It was funny, my top 10 came up and I was excited. I was like, yay, at the end, he's going to give me a shout out. And then it was someone else who had made the request before me. <laughs> so sadness. Sadness. Yeah, so. People get so upset that about that too. They're like, I requested this. How could you put someone else's name? Well, they requested <laughs> it like three months before you did. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was all unique, but I guess not. Okay. Um... By the way, I don't know if you saw J Rise had had uh, earlier on tried to enter your game, but I don't know if you got that message. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Good to know. Um, he's. I think he's started his own game at this point. So. Okay, that's fine. He usually comes over on a Friday, so we would do it together. But he's his parents were in town, so. Ah, uh, okay. So the next question comes from Tony, and Tony says, Evan, I need your input on a product that I'm trying at this moment. It's called Forever Living. It's an organic, I think he wants to say aloe vera product, and I want to make it really different, and this thing actually has a real benefit. How can I try to broad broadcast to all what about its benefits he's tried to do charity health awareness but it's still not really working do you have any advice got it okay so it, we actually had spoken to um tony we had spoken to someone else who was doing something that was very natural um product that i had i think it had a lot of like healing benefits and similar stories she was kind of struggling to uh, get traction for it, and so you may want to check out some of the earlier League of Leg Legends videos. I think it might have been one or two, episode one or two. Um, so the first question about um, how can you broadcast it? My question would be to you, have you started a YouTube channel? Um, that's, that's one way to absolutely start broadcasting right away to a global audience about uh, your product and um, you know I think there's just when I think about like healthy aloe products I mean I don't know for me personally I'm just gonna say that alone doesn't tell me enough to be really excited about it um, so I think this goes also goes back to the previous question of uh, we were talking to the makeup the, the girl who wanted to do the lipstick, it's like, how are you going to differentiate this organic product from every other one that's out there? Because there's tons. And um, I believe that it probably does have a real realistic benefit, but I, I would need more to be really excited about buying it and I don't know if that starts through education as well if you were broadcasting on YouTube maybe you could offer some online classes about how to use the product and why it's 
super beneficial and get people, start getting people involved and educated about why it's a benefit. But even beyond that, I still think um, you've got to differentiate it in a way that will really stand out to people. So they didn't say what the product Please. does, right? Just as an aloe vera product has a lot of benefits. That's it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, uh, agreed. You know, I think there's a lot of people trying to sell stuff and uh, you'll need to do a better job. Like even, even thinking about this, right? Like you have an opportunity here to ask a question, get some promotion, get people to know a little bit about mm -hmm. what you're doing. And Rishi and I are both confused as to what you're actually selling, which, which isn't great, right? Like you want to add value and explain what it is that you're doing. Uh, in every interaction, like it should be clear what your product is so that it's easy for us to talk about and share it. Um, that being mm -hmm. said, you know, the easiest way to, to grow a business and get more sales is through alliances. So who can you partner up with who already has your target market? Um, I think you'll, I think, I think there's an opportunity to create a YouTube channel like Rishi's idea. I think you'll get more short term results by uh, collaborating with people who already have a YouTube audience because it'll take you some time to build up your own channel. But if you collaborate with people who already have a channel, who already have an audience where there, there is an interest already, they're, they're talking about health related stuff, um, then that's, that's a much faster way to be able to build up and sell where a longer term play is to have your own channel. Cause you know, as Rishi knows too, creating your own YouTube channel takes time to build. It doesn't just happen mm -hmm. overnight. Um, yeah. but so I'd be thinking alliances. I'd be thinking influencers, people who are big on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc., Snapchat, uh, as well as other, other kinds of alliances like retail distribution. You know, you don't need to do, um, you don't need to only think online. You can go more traditional as well. Just think about who is already selling to your target audience and how can you make some kind of alliance with them so that they'll want to sell your product. Yeah, awesome. Shout out to Zeno who just who just popped into the chat. What up, Zeno? Welcome aboard, man. He was in for <laughs> he was in he was he was in for most of the hangouts yesterday too. And then he was late. He was late to the third one and he was getting shout outs. He's like, Zeno, where are you? People wanted to know where Zeno was. So he's got he's he's got that level of recognition already. <laughs> yep. I love it. Hardcore Believe Nation. Hardcore. Yep. All right. So the next question comes from Patricia. Okay. And Pat Patricia, she wants to ask you as a master YouTuber, is what she calls you, uh, could you please answer one question? I made a, she made a trailer for, uh, like a, a video trailer for an author. Okay. And... Um, so this client of hers, she was really embarrassed because basically this trailer video that she made for this author client was removed and she was freaking out, so embarrassed, and she, but she says YouTube is not explaining why, the, why this video got removed. So she's wondering about, is it possible that because she linked to Amazon at the end of a video, you know, is this is this why she was infringing, or somehow maybe you know not following the rules of YouTube? I don't know about an Amazon link. I don't think that should be a reason why your video would be removed. Um, there's tons of videos on YouTube about uh, things that get you flagged, things that get you, you know. And it's all usually copyright infringement. So I, for me, I would ask about like music. Did you use music in the video that um, you didn't have the rights to use? But Amazon links. Evan, do you know anything about Am Amazon links? So, so first off, YouTube always says why they remove a video. Uh, you always get a notification. So if if it's not your account, if your author's account, then just log into the. I wish I had it open now. Log into the channel and click on 
channel. Like if you go to my videos, the back end, the author dashboard, and click on channel, it'll show you uh, if you have any strikes. Uh, and if you look at the video itself on the video manager, it'll show you why it got blocked or removed. It won't. It won't be like YouTube won't delete a video. So if it's right. gone, then then whoever owns the account deleted it, and and maybe they're lying to you. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, they won't delete a video. They'll never delete a video. Even if they block it, they'll block it. You might get striked. You might get muted. Uh, you might get taken down in certain countries, but the video will still be in your video manager. So the only way to actually take it out of video manager is to delete it yourself. So the author must have deleted it somehow. Um, well, I, I, she, I think maybe, maybe it is in the video manager, but I'm wondering did they just like, I, I've seen muted videos, but I don't know, you know, do they take down videos as well, don't they? And then they put a big, this video was removed because of copyright infringement or whatever. And you're right. They always right. tell you. So right. she should have known, right? So huh. it may be, it may be, it may be removed from like public view, but it's still in your back right. end. It's always in your back end. And so yeah. that holds a secret for you to figure out what the problem was. And they always say what the problem was. Like I've had videos uh, that, that were blocked because we used a song. I, I, had a, I had a vacation video where I was singing Let It Go and it got blocked <laughs> because I was oh. singing Let It Go and, and you know, <laughs> Disney, I Dude, guess. Dude, that, that song, they're not going to let you get anything on that nothing, song. Nothing, man, way. nothing. I mean, my version wasn't that great either, but... <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh anyway, that aside, like Amazon links are fine. There's a there's a certain so there's a certain number of uh, of trusted authority links that they allow you to link from uh, and link to within a video. Uh, they do it now through their interactive cards. So there's a variety of those videos that, that you are allowed to link. Um, uh oh, am I gonna die? Am I gonna die? Am I gonna die? No, I'm not gonna die. So, yes. so Amazon is one of the one of the authority ones that that that's okay. Yeah, Amazon um, should be fine. There's a few other like there's some affiliate sites. There's some other ones that are that are totally cool that they approve. If you're putting stuff in the description, then then you're fine. Uh, you can put whatever you want in the description. There's nothing wrong with promotional videos. Like YouTube won't take down a video because you're promoting a book. There's nothing wrong with it. So. Uh, the secret lies really in your author backend or in your YouTube backend. Sorry to look at it and see why uh, why they're giving you a why they took it down. That's it. Okay, that's good. Good luck with that, Patricia. Yeah. Um. All right. So next question is Carl. He said, "I watched one of your YouTube videos, and what I was looking for is how do you sell." Only an idea. Okay. So he wants to he wants to know how can you sell an idea. All right. So, um, interesting question. Um, that is, I feel like I would need more more context. But, um, is this idea a product? Is this idea a service? Is this idea literally just? Uh, something that you can't actually execute on and practically do in action. Um, Evan, have you had this question before? What do you What do yeah. you think about it? Well, okay. So, like, uh, you gotta understand that the idea is not enough most of the time. Uh, you know, I when I was in the venture capital business, we never signed non-disclosure agreements. Which basically says like I won't talk about it, um, because we got so many people pitching the same idea at the same time, like a slightly different execution, but one person's business plan was not really that different than somebody else's. So it comes down to mm -hmm. the team behind the idea. So the only really way to sell an idea is if you can get it patented. You get a patent. That's basically what it is. I have an idea for something, and. Now I have this protection and I'm going to sell it. It's really the only way because 
like say you have an idea for like a lot of people say hey i have an idea for microsoft to be way better well like so do i i've got a million ideas for microsoft to get better it doesn't mean they're going to pay me for it the way to the way to get paid right. for it is like if you go and talk to microsoft and they actually like the idea what do you think they're going to do they're just going to take it right why do they need you you already gave them the idea yeah so the only way to do it is if your idea is protected right like they have to pay you for it because if they do it on their own oops whoa don't die don't die i'm fine okay if they do it on their own um and try you can sue them so the only real way to get an idea and just sell that alone without any kind of execution without you doing any of the work like if the value add is just in that initial idea and you add no more value on top of it afterwards then you need to get the patent okay great that was easy enough let's move on to the next question yeah um lindsay she says how to oh how do you prepare for finding potential angel investors so she is this is a longer question as well so we can get into more of the detail of it um but she's in the she's in the limousine industry she wants to transition out of that industry to be a full-time webmaster webmaster a webmaster okay of the dot uh says the dot i don't know what that means and li and limo directory the dot and limo directory site okay. so i think she has multiple websites that are in the limousine industry and anyway she's been really struggling because basically uber of uh, uber is is leading to I guess the limousine industry demise. Sure. So she's looking for angel investor here in Melbourne. And um, so she gave a list of requirements or basically things that she specifically needs from an angel investor. And pretty much just wanted to know from you, what do you, what do you think? Do, do we know do you want me to go through each question? What's the money for? Um, that's what she lists, the different things that she's going to need. So she's looking for about thirty-five to 40000 and she needs a media campaign, TV and radio. She wants to create an app. She wants to hire two people for two months to help create approximately 1,200 listings. And so then she has three questions, follow-up questions from there. You want me to continue, or you want to start there? Or? Uh, I, I mean, I have enough to go on. I don't know if you have an answer already. Well, uh, it looks at least this is actually maybe the first uh, person that is asked for. It looks like she has a very, a little bit more of a real clear plan as to how she wants to be prepared if she is going to go ask for an, an investor. Um, and uh, I guess I'm, I'm trying to look at her questions too so I can respond a little bit according to, I would want to ask her, is she super, super, before she does all of this, knowing what she does know about the industry changing, like I really want to ask her, like, is this super what she's passionate about? Like is this a good idea or is this like your passion idea? Is this what you really feel is, I mean, cause it does seem like it's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle. Um, and so, uh, I would just want to make sure that she feels very much like this is absolutely where she wants to go all in. And you might know more right now about how this, how this industry is changing, Evan, but I just, I know that, I know that Uber <laughs> in particular has like pretty much threatened a lot of the uh, other companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I guess I would ask uh, before going to, you know, before an investor, I wonder how much of a margin 
you would expect in this industry. I mean, it's just kind of like the, remember we were talking about the grocery market industry and how like, would, would an angel investor want, is this what an angel investor would want to invest in? Mm -hmm. um, those are just some questions. I know those aren't answers, but what do you think? Uh, I think you're gonna have a really hard time getting an angel investor for this. I think the market is not where you want it to, where, it, where, like, where people want to see it now. They, people don't want to invest in apps too for like, like they don't want to pay your R&D, right? Like if you want to do an app, oh. great, but they want to see that you've built it and you're, you're, you're growing and you need marketing dollars. Not that I, I want to build an app and I need the money to do it. Especially if you're in an industry that's declining or that's suffering and that's struggling, mm -hmm. nobody wants to take that bet. It's just too risky a bet. Yeah. That's the challenge. I don't think people would bet on it. So the way to do it is you got to prove it. Like start smaller, mm -hmm. prove it, build up some momentum for it, show that it works. And then you can easily raise money to expand. I'm still not 100% what the idea is, but if it's right, to launch a series of websites, like just go out and do it. Uh oh, am I gonna die? I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I died. Very sad. Um, yeah, I'm doing okay. Nine, four, and twelve, but my team is uh, the team is throwing a little bit here. We'll see. Um, yeah, do it. Like nobody's gonna invest money in something that is. Like, have you proven that before? Like, have you proven that you can get media exposure for something? You want to do a media campaign? You've had success with that before. Have you hired people for two months before and gotten results from it? Have you built an app before and gotten results from it? Right? If you haven't, then you have to go out and prove it. Because otherwise, like, imagine somebody came to you and wanted money and say, "Hey, give me how much is it? Thirty thousand dollars?" Yeah, thirty, thirty-five to forty. So give me $40,000, I want to do a bunch of stuff that I've never done before, and I'm pretty sure it's going to work out. Like, there's no way, you, would, you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't give them the money, it's yeah. just too risky. So you have to, you have yeah. to find the, the path of least resistance, find the easiest way to get started, and just start and prove some initial results. Like, if you've done it before, if you've had success, then people will just give you money because they bet on you because you've done it before. Like if I wanted to go raise money for something, I could do it off an idea because I've done it before. Right. But if you haven't and it's a new field for you, it's for everybody, not, not, just, not just the question, but for everybody who's kind of thinking the same thing. Nobody's gonna pay you to learn. You have to be able to figure it out. And they'll pay you to expand, but they don't want you making mistakes on their dollar. Right. My team is throwing hard. It's so, tough. yeah, it does. All right. But but uh, hopefully, like, edu it helps educate too and explains what needs to be done in order to get to where she wants to go. Absolutely, absolutely. I think to uh, I think it's always good like if you're gonna ask if you are gonna jump into this because you you know make sure you really love it <laughs> you know because it does sound like it's gonna when an industry is declining you have to you have to be doing it because it's just compelling you you have to you love it that much you know sure. yeah and there is a way to win and, and honestly like if you're still really thinking about it i went on a long explanation yesterday in the video about how to raise capital with all the different options and what they look for and all that so um i i checked that out but honestly just thinking about the situation i think you have to narrow it down to what you can be really successful at and and go prove it before you try to raise capital against it mm -hmm. hey great um next question comes from Imoni, and Imoni says um, she has this, 
she's always had a dream of being an entrepreneur, uh, owning a Danco bus transportation business, so another transportation industry. Right. Um, and she basically, hold on one second, it's a little hard to understand this. Um, okay, so she's asking specifically about if she goes into this transportation business, is it good to start with partnering with someone? Got it. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if in the in the beginning, depending on how much uh, background she has in this particular industry, I mean, I don't know if she could immediately start with partnerships. Um, hearing from your experience, Evan, you, your partnerships always were formed because you were uh, adding a ton. I mean, it was mutually beneficial in terms of the value that was going to be added from the partnership. So if she is in the beginning stages of this industry, um, it might be important that she has a lot of value to bring to it. Um, but I would definitely also start with uh, getting to know someone in this industry, being really getting really familiar with the with the industry, and um, and just doing it. You know, getting maybe getting involved in in another uh, business that's doing exactly what she wants to do, so she can really start to gain the knowledge of the business. Die. Yeah. Uh, so for me, partnerships are interesting. <laughs> I've had success with them. Um, I've had mm -hmm. some non successes with them. <laughs> you know, it's like getting married. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. People, people just jump into uh, partnerships because it looks good on paper. Like, oh, well, you're mm -hmm. really good at operations and I'm really good at sales. That's a perfect partnership. Why don't we connect and then you get into business and it slowly starts to fall apart um, just like just like in a relationship you want to you want to date before you're getting married and it can be a really great way like if you know that you're lacking skills and you really want to do something and, and you know you want that accountability partner you want to do something together with somebody it can be fantastic but it has to be the right person just like you wouldn't mm -hmm. just look up, uh, you know, a profile on a dating website and decide to marry that person. You know, you'd want to learn about them first and date them and spend a little bit of time together. So, in theory, it can be fantastic. But what you need to do is set up some test projects first to do together. Something, start something on a trial, see how well you work together, see if it's something that really fits well together, you're really collaborating well together, um, and if you are, then you can structure something more more solid and long term. But to start, I would say make sure you're, you're just really careful about how you're going to be uh, bringing on the person. Um, I'm going to die! Oh, I, oh, I, well, I died. I, th I killed three, no. but I died. I killed three, but I died. Um, Dang it! And and it's the same too. What's well, okay? We we we're doing well. We're gonna. I think we're gonna win. Um, it's the same thing for bringing on from from bringing on uh, employees, not to the same level. Because a partner, like if you have a crappy business partner, it sucks. It sucks to get out because they own uh, a chunk of your business. Um, mm. Just like you know, if you're in a relationship and you need to get divorced, it sucks. Right, and hopefully you learn about yourself enough so that the next time you do it, uh, you can avoid the traps that you fell into. Uh, but when you're bringing on people on your team as well, you want to make sure that they're people that don't just share the skills that you need, but share the same values. And coming back to the idea of the one word, what is it that you stand for? What's so important to you? And having somebody on your team and somebody who you're partnered with who loves that, who agrees with you, who's the exact same. Um, so, yes, it makes sense as a strategy. It could be amazing for you. Just make sure you're doing your research and uh, don't mm -hmm. get into bed with the wrong person. 
<laughs> well, it sounds like she does have some experience too. Um, it's a little hard to for me to fully get this uh, how she's uh, how she's wording it, but. Um, let's say she decides just to go for it on her own and she doesn't do the partnership route. Um, do you have any like quick guidelines or tips as to, um, you know, how she could just get started on her own? Cause she sounds like she, she may not actually go the partner route if she feels like she could do it on her own in the beginning. Right. So what, what is, what's the business? It's a, uh, it's a Danfo bus transportation. So, um, looks like it's a, a bus company. Right. Okay. So, I'd be looking at what does she feel is missing? Like, what are the skills that she doesn't have that that she needs, and how else can she find those skills if it's not through a partnership? Right. So, like, what's holding you back from getting started? Why can't you go out and do this? tomorrow. Maybe partnership is still the right way to go. All I'm saying is find, make sure you're doing it with the right person. Um, but what, what are mm -hmm. the skills? Like, what are you missing? What do you need to be able to get this thing off the ground? Hey, we won. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Congrats. Um, yeah. So like what's holding her back from getting started? How can you start this in a small scale as possible? Um, what's preventing you from taking that next step, understanding that, and then breaking that down into the simplest steps possible. Like maybe it's, well, I need a bus. Wait, how did we do here? I got S plus. I had 17 kills, five deaths, and 16 assists. Pretty solid, led the game in CS. Oh, here's a thing that you said from, from J-Rise, yeah. Okay, I didn't see that. Um, yeah, like say, okay, my the thing that's holding me back is I need a bus. You know, I need a, I can't get a bus. Well, do you have to go out and buy a bus? You know, does it, can you lease a bus? Can you make a partnership with somebody who already has a bus that's not being used and give them a cut of the sales that you make? Like, be resourceful. It's not just about the getting the, the money. It's about trying to find ways to stretch what you have. So if you can't afford to get a bus, then find someone who has a bus and try to make some kind of alliance. Like, hey, your bus is just sitting there not being used or, or you don't want to get in the business anymore. How about I take it over and give you a cut of the profits that I make from it? You know, or if you need help on the marketing side, you know, can you go to your local university and, and say, hey, I'd love for you to help me uh, with your students as their project for the semester, help me market my new bus transportation company. Like, you gotta mm -hmm. start thinking, uh, outside the box, be resourceful because there's going to be a million of these things that will come up as an entrepreneur that you need to uh, address. So, the partnership route still be the best one just for you, like mm -hmm. especially if you need that accountability. Like, I want to do this with somebody, I don't want to do it alone. Uh, just mm -hmm. again, make sure that you're picking the right person. Cool, cool. How many more questions uh, do you want? Do you want me to ask? So I know. Well, I think that's I it. Over, over ask you. Oh, yeah, yeah? yeah, the game, we won. That's it. I won. The game is over. <laughs> okay. Um, until next time. I, until next time, Evan. Thanks so much. Cool. And uh, Rishi, what's, what's the latest on your channel? What's happening? What are you doing now? What are you up to? Ah, uh, well, um, you know, I. I've been on a little bit of a, my schedule changed a little bit. I was at five days a week and I've been doing one video a week for right now, um, but I've been super missing it. Like every day I'm like, I want to put a video out today and talk to my people. Um, Rishi Cup TV is my channel, you, uh, Rishi Cup TV where good music, good food and good talk intersect. Although I'll just say this, the good food part is probably being transitioned out for something way in my mind way cooler so um i'm excited about some changes on the channel and uh yeah just hoping to make some really fun good content for everybody but i like it and if you're missing it it's a good sign i am i really am i yesterday i i almost did a google live google hangout just to like <laughs> chat with folks because <laughs> 
a lot of your so, answers were also like, you should do a YouTube channel. So you could tell there's YouTube on the brain there. Hey, I really do love YouTube. It's just super fun. So excited to get back to my five day a week schedule. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Not sure when it's going to come out, but we'll let you know. Continue to believe or whatever your one word is. And we'll see you soon. <laughs> Believe y'all.